Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and I'm your host on this journey into men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. Now today, I've got three great questions for you that have been posed to me on the topic of wristwatches by uh, different viewers who've dropped me either a comment in the comment section below, or they've emailed me via the email address on the screen now, which you can also find in the About section on the YouTube channel. And yeah, I love wristwatches. I'm more than happy to give you my thoughts and observations and try and answer your questions. And before we go any further, I know lots of YouTubers do it, so I'll, I'll join in the trend. I'm gonna give you a wristwatch check. What am I wearing today? Well, it's a warm and sunny day in the UK, and hence I'm wearing the classic Rolex Submariner. It's my go-to watch for the summer months, mostly because it's got that great, um, glide lock bracelet on it which allows you to adjust it if your wrist swells in the in the heat and it's also perfect if you find yourself near a swimming pool and just want to jump in because that 300 meter water resistance you know you've not got to worry about your watch so let's get to the questions today now my first question is from era and he says i have a seiko automatic sport 5 200 meter diver's watch, 11 and a half years old. It now needs servicing as it's had just one service since I've had it. The question is, is it worth sending it to be serviced at a cost of 180 pounds? Bearing in mind the brand new watch today costs only 245 pounds, or should I buy a new one? Or keep the Seiko until it stops working and then buy another one? Uh, I've seen some good Seiko automatics for about 170 pounds. It's a good question. And it's one that many of us will face, um, particularly in this era where more and more of us are concerned about the impact that we have in the consumer world. We keep buying and buying and buying stuff and nothing ever seems to drop off. And we end up as hoarders of things, don't we? And it's a good question here because if you can buy a brand new Seiko 5 sports watch, excellent watch by the way great great watch it costs only 245 pounds are you really going to pay 180 to get it serviced what are my thoughts on that well there's some there's some obvious things there first of all sentimentality you know when it comes to the cost of things your sentimentality overrides it is it a watch that was given to you by a special friend a relative and it has intrinsic value to you beyond its financial cost if that's the case then you've got to weigh up you know is this a watch you want to wear for another decade uh, in that case the 180 pounds for another 10 years of you know productive accurate wrist watch wearing seems reasonable on that subject accuracy you know if you're not worried about the accuracy of your watch is it worth having it serviced you know, have a wear the watch until it fundamentally stops performing for you. You know, it's way out in the time scale. And then, then you need to broach this question again. Now, to keep track of your accuracy, um, you know, for me personally, I like to keep my watches accurate. I like to know what they're doing. So I use an app on my iPhone called Toolwatch. You just download that, it's all free. Uh, and it allows you to track your accuracy over extended periods of time. So, you know, whilst you might like the watch, if you test the watch and you find that it's losing, you know, three or four minutes a week, its attractiveness to you might wane a little bit. So keep an eye on the accuracy. When it starts to fall away in its performance beyond a level which you find acceptable, then you might have to be a little bit more brutal. It's like, you know, making that decision regarding the old family gun dog he's old he's incontinent but you still love him at what point do you take him to the vets and dig a big hole difficult decisions to make same goes for the watch um, and don't forget you know try and shop around find some cheaper service options if you're going to say a, a Seiko boutique or a, C, a Seiko authorized dealer and they're quoting 180 pounds you might be able to source that somewhere else a lot cheaper you might be able to halve that price if you go to a little independent watchmaker who can do the job for you on the side. So I hope that helped. Basically, sentimentality, accuracy, and trying to get it cheaper somewhere else, they're questions you have to ask yourself, and the response you get will decide what happens with the watch. Okay, so a question from Michael D'Souza. Um, great video, Ash. As always, good to hear your views. Perhaps a video 
or a question for the future, smart watch wearing. I own an Omega Seamaster, which I have had for over 10 years and wear daily. However, I've been debating on an Apple watch. I can't bring myself to get one. That would mean I'm not wearing my chaps watch. What are your thoughts, sir? Well, this is a question which crosses many people at some point or another. You know, the Apple Watch, the all-conquering Apple Watch, seems to be becoming more and more prevalent wherever you look. And I know what you're going to think. Do I own one? No, I do not. But I do own a smartwatch. I wear a sports watch because um, I run to keep fit and I like to keep track of my performance. So I own um, a watch, a Garmin watch, which allows me to track uh, my running performance. You know, I can tell whether I'm doing a little bit better, a little bit worse, whether I can try a bit harder. So I get it. I really do get the sports watch question. Um, I've never owned an Apple watch, but I know they're so functional, it's difficult, you know, not to want one. Um, for me though, I wear my watches for enjoyment, all right? I wear them for the pleasure of wearing an automatic timepiece, which gives me joy when I look at the watch. I know that wouldn't be the case if I looked at an Apple Watch to tell the time. It just wouldn't give me any pleasure. Similarly, I like the fact that my watch tells the world a little bit about my personality. It tells people I enjoy Swiss wristwatches, which are well made. Um, they tell people that I like, uh, you know, accuracy in timekeeping and things like that. It says a lot about me. It's an element of my style as much as my timekeeping. I'll give you a really good example. Um, a, a couple of weeks ago, my father, who's 90, was taken ill in the middle of the night. He's absolutely fine, I'm very pleased to say, but he, he, he thought he was unwell and he lives near me. So I went to his home, I think it was about four o'clock in the morning to check, you know, make sure he was okay. We called an ambulance just to check on his welfare. And when the ambulance turned up, the ambulance driver walked in and you know, as they do, the paramedic, they talk to you to try and lower the tone to make sure everybody's less anxious and frightened. And this ambulance driver, he looked at my, he, I was talking to him, telling him what I'd observed around my dad since I'd been there. And he looked down, he, he looked me up and down as one does, you know, first impressions count. And he said to me, is that a Rolex you're wearing? Now, believe it or not, I was wearing a Rolex GMT Master 2, a, a, a root beer, uh, the semi, uh, the, the two-tone gold version. And I said, yeah, yeah, it is. And he said, uh, I've got exactly the same watch. And you know what? It broke the ice. It took the edge off the situation. We were all rather tense uh, and, you know, we had something in common, something to talk about. It's not about being a snob or anything like that. This guy, he's a paramedic. I've just got a normal civil servant job, but we enjoy fine wristwatches. We had a talking point going forward. It's amazing how a wristwatch can bring people together in a conversation. I do not believe an Apple Watch would have had the same effect. So I think you have my answer there, Michael. The fact is, yes, a functional, highly practical smartwatch has a place in your life, but it doesn't replace the fine wristwatch. You know, you wear that Seamaster when you want the joy of wearing a watch. You wear the Apple Watch when you want the functionality of having a computer on your wrist. Draw from that what you will. I hope it's been helpful. And finally, a question from Tom at the bottom here. And Tom asked me, Ash, um, would you know what a good vintage classic watch would be at a more affordable sub 500 pounds budget? Thanks very much. The question there is clearly, he doesn't want to spend a huge amount of money on a watch. He's looking for 500 pounds and below to get a nice, quality classical gentleman's wristwatch. It's a tough one, but there are many good ones out there. And we've all, I think, already had the answer in this series of questions. The first question was about a Seiko 5, yeah? The Seiko 5 automatic Sport 5 watches, fantastic. 250 pounds, the prices vary depending on what you want. But for around about 250 pounds up, you get a classic, looking, and I say classic looking, there are many, many watches in the range. So you're going to be able to find something which fits your needs. You know, uh, it's going to look good. There's different sizes, but there's a classic 40 millimeter size. Um, you can't go far wrong. You really can't go far wrong with that watch. It's going to last you. Well, in the first instance, you know, our first question today, here's a gentleman who's owned, owned a Seiko 5 for 11 and a half years. 
uh, and he's thinking about is it worth having it serviced. 11 and a half years for what, 250 pound watch? You know, it, it pays you back in dividends, doesn't it? So yes, I'd be looking in that area. If you want something even more classic, it's gonna cost you a little bit more, but for me, Oris. Oris is a great Swiss brand. It's got a history going back over 100 years. It's far older than Rolex uh, and the other big brands that people, you know, just trips off the tongue these days is the industry standard. But Oris makes some fabulous watches in some great styles. Now, they are going to be more than £500. There's no denying that. Um, and, you know, my favourite in their range is the Oris 65 Diver. That comes in, you know, you're going to be looking at £1,500. But... But I notice you said um, vintage. Vintage suggests you're open to pre-owned wristwatches. You know, why not look at, say, um, pre-owned Oris 65 Divers? I had a quick look on eBay and there, there are watches on there trading for about £600. So if you're prepared to push your budget a little bit, you can have an absolutely beautiful, classic, uh, Swiss-made diving watch with a heritage that goes back many years and will give you decades of service for sure. If you're prepared to push a bit further with the budget, you know, sticking with Oris, don't forget, you know, these wristwatches, if you're not talking about Rolex and Patek and the big brands, negotiation is absolutely on the table in the authorised dealers. Um, and Oris, for instance, you know, don't forget, many of these fancy wristwatches, the, the profitability margins for the authorised dealers is 40% and upwards. So there's a lot of wiggle room there. So if you're looking at a watch, uh, you know, in the £1,500 bracket, there's a long way to come down. There's a lot of room for movement if you're prepared to be cutthroat and negotiate hard. Because these authorised dealers, you know, they can shift Rolex watches all day long, but those Orises, those other brands, they're going to be in the window for months and months and months, and they are prepared to negotiate. So get in there, go for the juggler, you know, really push them hard, get the best deal that you can, and you are likely to get some great watches. So I hope that's been helpful. Seiko 5, possibly look at Oris. Give it a thought. Well, chaps, I hope you've enjoyed this Q&A video today. If you have, Join the revolution. Send me some questions. Comment section below or via email and perhaps I'll answer your questions in a video very soon. Until then, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And if not, I will see you again soon in my next video. Until then, take care. <laughs>